Joshua 1, Take verse 5. The title of today's message is, A Change is Coming. A Change is Coming. I'm preaching to you out of my personal devotion. And I don't know what it is, but since the ending of Deuteronomy, God has really been speaking to me in this area. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how long we're going to sit and abide and dwell on this text. But the next time I preach, I already have notes set aside for the next time that I preach on. And we're going to be right here for a little bit, probably the whole month of July, if I'm not, if I'm not, if I'm not crazy. Um, God has really been dealing with me in this. And I pray that when he speaks to my heart, it, it transcends to your heart. A change is coming. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. For those of you who are taking notes and following along, I'm reading out of the NIV. And I'll be reading through verse 11. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 through 11. If you would please, when you got it, would you say amen? Amen. amen. It reads like this in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. It says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will ne never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you, you will lead this people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Listen to this. Be careful to obey all the laws my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from them to the right or the left. And then he explains the why. That you may be, that you may be successful wherever you go. Verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you might be careful to do everything written in it. And then he says, then you will be prosperous and successful. Those are two promises with conditions. So for those of you who go through a hard time, you say, well, why is God letting this happen to me? And why is God doing this to me? If I'm reading this correctly, the questions are, are you following his law? Are you following what is written down? If not, then that might be the answer to your question. And then he says this in verse 9, and this is Pastor Raul's favorite verse. And it's the verse that I gave you on Father's Day when we gave you those coffee mugs, for those of you who were here. It says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you for your own. In other words, a change is coming. Something's about to shift. Something's about to take place. Would you please bow your heads in prayer? Lord God, I thank you for the opportunity, the privilege, and the honor to be able to speak and preach and teach your word. I don't take it lightly, Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus that I would be your voice piece this morning. That it would be you who speaks to your people. Through this message, through this word, I pray that lives would be changed. That people would be encouraged, that they would be lifted up, that they would be built up. Father God, that they would walk out of here armed this morning. With the fire and the power and the sword of the spirit. Ready for battle, ready for what you have for them. If I read this text correctly, it says that we are to go in and take possession of the land. In other words, there may be a fight, there may be a struggle, there may be a lucha as it said in Spanish, there might be a little bit of a hardship, but according to this, you will be with us wherever we go. And so we'll always have the victory. So in the name of Jesus, I pray that that, that that seed would take root in somebody's heart and that they would understand that they cannot lose when you are on our side. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. And we pray that you would have your way in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. This morning, I believe that a change and a shift and a transition is about to happen in, your, in somebody's life. As a matter of fact, I'll say this, that I believe this, and y'all never hear me say this. I believe that I have a word from the Lord for somebody in this place. It's almost as if it were prophetic. That's how hard and that's how deep I feel it in my spirit. And I want you to be ready for the next move that God has for you because a change is coming. 
And it's coming into your life. The same anointing that is on this church is about to go into somebody's house in the name of Jesus. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? The same healing power that has been going on in this church is about to go into somebody's workplace because you are a representative and ambassador of Jesus Christ. And God is about to show off his power, his glory, and his might. I'm telling you that God has something in store for you this morning. And I pray that you please do not miss it. You might be tired and you might be broken and you might be weak. But I came here to tell you that something is about to happen and you are about to experience a move of God like you've never experienced it before. Hallelujah! I want you to be ready to receive what God has for you this morning. You see, the devil's been messing with you because he doesn't want you to receive this word. He's been messing with you because he wants to hold you down. But I came here to tell you that the devil is a liar. Anything can happen in this place this morning. Anything can happen in your walk. Anything can happen in your spirit. A change is coming into this place this morning. In the name of Jesus, somebody is about to get a breakthrough. Somebody's about to get a promise. Somebody's about to get a miracle. Somebody's about to get a blessing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! And according to the text that we opened up with, it doesn't matter where you go. God is going to be with you. Amen. Whether you stay or whether you go, God is going to be with you. Whether you take that job or not, God is going to be with you. He said he will be with you wherever you go. And God sent me here this morning to tell somebody that you will not die until you get all the blessings that he ordained and decreed for you to have. You will get all the miracles and all the breakthroughs as long as you do what he called you to do. As long as you do what he created you to do. God kept you alive just so that he could bless you. That's how awesome God is. He is so awesome. He is so bad that he kept you alive in the middle of the, the drive-by shooting, in the middle of a car accident, in the middle of cancer, in the middle of breast cancer, in the middle of hepatitis. God kept you alive just so that he could bless you. For somebody in here, he rebuked the devil to bless you. He allowed some turmoil and some pressure to come into your life so that he could turn it around and make it a blessing for your life. That's how good God is. So don't you die until you receive everything that God has called you to have in the name Amen. of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Get ready because a change is coming. And change isn't always a bad thing. A lot of people, they don't like change, but it's not always a bad thing, no matter how it looks. Sometimes you feel like you take a hit, but then it turns out to be a blessing in disguise. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. There's been a lot of those in my life where I thought, Man, right? Hey, somebody, some of you broke up with somebody, and now you're looking back, you're like, man, thank God I didn't take that. <laughs> Amen? You're like, man, that was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> Sometimes it's just a shift. Sometimes it's just a transition. Sometimes it's just a change in your life. God is moving and shifting and transitioning and switching some things around in your life this morning. You hear what I'm telling you? I don't know who that's for, but that's for somebody. You've been leery and you've been worried and you've been kind of, oh, I don't know if I should do this. I'm here to tell you that God is about to change some things in your life this morning. I want you to notice something, okay? You have to have this change in your life. It has to take place. So that way you can see the blessings that you never dreamed of and you never imagined and you never, you never even thought that you would ever see. But you have to go through this thing. It's a process. It's a, it's a refiner's fire to be able to take out all the impurities so that way you can stay as pure as gold on the other side. You see, some of you are going through some stuff and you've got the wrong mindset. You've got the wrong mentality. You have a defeated mindset. You have a, def you have a victim mentality. And you've got to get it right. You've got to say, you know what? No, no, no. God, you're up to something and I trust you. Amen. I trust you in the middle of this storm. Amen? Amen? I want you to notice something that whenever God says something in his word, it's always powerful. It's always absolute, and it's always for eternity. When he speaks, it resounds through eternity because God is not a person of time. And so when he speaks, it's forever. When God said, let there be light, he only said it one time, and the light has never gone out since the day he said it. Amen. Do you hear what I'm telling you? That's how powerful my God is. He is so powerful that the word of God is so powerful that Job said that it's more important than food. That's what Job said. King David said that God's word was a, a lamp unto his feet, a light unto his path. That's how powerful God's word is. That's how true God's word is. Jesus 
told Lazarus one time to come out of the grave. He told him to come forth out of the tomb. And the Bible says that Lazarus got up from the dead and he came out of the tomb. That's how powerful my God is. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? Jesus told a, a little girl, Talitha Kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, come out or arise. And he only said it one time and that little girl came back to life. Listen to what I'm telling you when I tell you that when Jesus speaks, it's powerful and it's absolute and it's for eternity. Do you know that one time they were carrying a casket of a little boy and Jesus walked up to the casket and he placed his hand on the casket casket, and he said one time, he said, arise. And the Bible says that that little boy came out of the casket. I'm telling you that when God speaks, it's powerful, it's absolute, and it's for all eternity. But right here in this text, God says the same thing three times. He says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Three times he says it. He says it in verse 6. He says it in verse 7. And he says it in verse 9. And he says it all throughout the end of Deuteronomy. And I want you to pay attention. He wasn't asking he was commanding you to be strong and courageous. It's not a choice and it's not an option. He's telling you to take courage. He's telling you to be strong. He's telling you that you don't have a choice in the matter. In order for you to ever have victory in your life, you're going to have to be strong and you're going to be have, to have to be courageous. You cannot worry about failing. You cannot be, be worried about falling back. You can't be worried about the trials and the storms that are going to come into your life. You can't be worried about the hardships and the hard times. You can't be worried about being, uh, being in want or lacking. You can't worry about your haters. You can't worry about your gossipers. You can't worry about your backbiters. You can't worry about your naysayers. Instead, you've got to focus on being strong and courageous. You've got to focus on trusting in God. No matter what is happening in your life all around you, you've got to trust that God is going to see you through. And the Bible says that all things work together for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. All things. And in this text, God even warned us about being afraid. He said, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Because fear will rob you of your victory. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Anxiety, timidity, and fear, it'll rob you. That is satanic. It's demonic. If you're living with fear and anxiety in your life, it'll take, it'll paralyze you from getting the miracle in your life. It'll paralyze you from getting a breakthrough. It'll paralyze you from getting a blessing. You have to change your mindset and you have to change your attitude to be strong and courageous. You can't be making lame excuses and saying, oh, I want to give up. Oh, I'm having a pity party. Oh, poor me. Oh, woe is me. You got to get that out of there in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you got to say, I will not quit. I will not give up. There is no turning back. There is no quitting. I belong to Jesus. Amen. God wants you to make up your mind, your mind this morning that losing is no longer an option. God wants you to be strong and courageous even before you get into the fight. If you pay attention, three times in this text, he tells them, for in three days, I'm going to take you into this land and you're going to take possession of it. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Haven't I commanded you to be strong and courageous? God wants you to know that when he's with you, you cannot lose. When he's with you, you're a majority. God wants you to be strong and very courageous because he's going to bless you. He's going to bless your life. He's going to bless your family. And he's going to bless the generations that are coming after you. And then he says something very important. And I'll touch more. I'll dig into this next week or in the next time that I preach, I should say. He says this. Get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land that the Lord your God has given you for your very own. In other words, things are about to change. Get ready. Things are about to change. A change is coming, like the title of this message is. You see, some of you, you're in the middle of a change. Some of you are in the middle of a transition. And change is very diff difficult for some people. And God was telling Joshua to get ready because things were about to change for God's people in three days. How many of you know that we serve a God that's always on the move? He does not change, but he's always moving. And you got to be ready to move with the cloud of God. You got to be ready. Is he going as a cloud, as a pillar of fire by night to lead the way, to show, to light the way for you? Or is he going as a cloud 
to cover you from all the storms and to cover you from the from the sun, the scorching sun. Is he going to protect you? Is he going to lead you? And you've got to figure it out because as God's people, you got to be ready to move whenever God says to move. You can't be sitting there saying, oh, but wait, just give me one more sign. Oh, but wait, just give me one more thing. Oh, but wait, you've got to move when God calls you to move. Things change when God moves in your life. Let me tell you that devils and demons run when God moves in your life. They are cowards and they will run back to the pit of hell that they came from as long as you move with the move of God. <laughs> Things are about to change in your life and you're about to come into a season of blessing. And y'all know me, those of you who are regulars here, I'm not a prosperity preacher, but I feel a change in this, in this season. I feel a change this year. Some of you, you've been battling all of 2022 and you've been battling all of 2023 and all of a sudden right now, I'm here to tell you, we got four months left in this year and God is about to change some things in your life. Somebody is coming out of depression if you could just capture this word in the name of Jesus. Somebody is coming out of debt if you could just capture this word in the name of Jesus. Somebody in here is coming out of the storm that you've been in for years and years and years if you could just capture this word that I'm telling you this morning. God is getting ready to take you out of whatever it is that has been holding you back and whatever it is that's been holding you down. Your freedom is on its way in the name of Jesus. God is getting ready to make you rise up out of your, out of your adversity and out of your opposition. Somebody in here is getting a new car. Somebody else is getting a new house. Listen to what I'm telling you. This is a season of blessing. Something is about to change in your life. So when God starts to change things in your life, don't expect him to do it the way that you wanted him to do it because he is not going to do he's not going to change things the way that you thought or the way that you wanted. When you ask God for a blessing, don't be surprised when it doesn't look like the way that you thought it was going to look. Amen. Somebody in here asked God for a spouse. And when God answered, you were like, man, that's not what I had in mind, Lord. <laughs> Come on. You were like, Lord, this is what we were talking about. <laughs> this is my dream sheet right here. <laughs> Amen. Some of you asked God for a new job, and now you're complaining about the job he gave you. See, you're looking at it all wrong. You have to trust God, and you have to trust his answers. I'm not going to tell you to trust the process. I'm going to tell you to trust God through the process. Even when it doesn't look like the way you wanted it to look. Even when you, it doesn't look like the way that you thought it was going to look like. Sometimes the blessing doesn't look like that at all. It looks quite the opposite. Many times God will send you a blessing through adversity. Through trouble. You know, my grandbaby... Is one of the biggest blessings in my life in the last three months. When I found out my daughter was pregnant, I was hurt, I was disappointed. My wife told you about it on Mother's Day. I'm not gonna bore you with those details. Man, what a blessing he turned out to be in my life. Amen. And now I get to impart it to him so that he can go and speak and preach to future generations. You see, what the enemy intends for evil, God is gonna turn it around Amen. for the good. Amen. Sometimes your blessing and your miracle, it's wrapped up in turmoil and it's wrapped up in heartache and it's wrapped up in bad news. You see, some of us, you will hear that you got cancer and all is lost. All your faith is gone. Instead, you should look at it like an opportunity that God's going to show up in your life and he's going to show off his power, his glory, and his might. And he's going to show out every devil and every cell and every molecule of cancer. And he's about to show everybody who's God. He's going to use you. He chose you to be able to be that person who gets to show, to be a walking billboard that God is still in the, in the business of doing miracles. He's still in the business of, of healing people. He's still in the business of showing off. Amen. Amen. We got to look at it different than the way that we did it. Because if you don't have faith in God, then you won't make it the, through the hell that you have to go through in order to get your blessing and in order to get your miracle. But see, some of us in this room, we've been through enough trouble. We've been through enough heartache. We've been through enough hell to, to, to make it up in our minds that come hell or high water, we're going to do whatever it takes to get the miracle. We're going to do whatever it takes to get the breakthrough. We're going to do whatever it takes to get the blessing. And we will not let go of God until he blesses us like the way Jacob did in Mount Peniel. Do you hear what I'm telling you? We are not leaving this place until we get our healing in the name of Jesus. There are some things that God will give you, and if you 
don't receive it right, you'll never get your blessing. You'll lose the blessing. You'll lose the miracle. You have to refuse to live in fear and you have to refuse to be intimidated. You have to refuse to allow intimidation, anxiety, and fear to rule your life. You have to be determined to be strong and very courageous to get the blessing that God has for you. You see, it takes strength and courage to get out of being narrow-minded. It takes strength and courage to stop thinking like the way that you were raised, whether it's right or wrong. It takes strength and courage to get out of having a defeated mindset and a victim mentality. It takes strength and courage to get out of your comfort zone and walk into unknown territory when you walk with God. It takes strength and courage to break out of your tradition, your religion, and your dogma. It takes strength and courage to break free from bondages, afflictions, and addictions. It takes free to break, it takes, it takes strength and courage to break free and to be free indeed like the Bible says. Amen. Amen. It takes strength and courage to break free from what you're used to. It takes strength and courage to move in the move of God. I was sharing with my daughter Rebecca earlier. We were talking uh, earlier this week. We were talking about Abraham, and uh, we were talking about how God had chosen Abraham. And I shared with her that one of the scariest scriptures in the Bible that I've ever read was when God stopped with Abraham's daddy. His name was Terah, and the Bible says that he settled in Ai. When I read that scripture, I said, Lord, don't let me settle. Because when he went to Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make you as numerous as the stars in the sky. I'm going to make you as numerous as the sand on the seashore. I'm going to bless you so much that all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed, are going to be blessed because of you. He fulfilled that with Jesus. And when Jesus died on the cross for you and I, God fulfilled that promise to Abraham. But see, Abraham didn't settle. The Bible says that God told Abraham, I'm going to take you into a foreign country. I'm going to take you into an unfamiliar place, an unfamiliar place, an unfamiliar territory. But you got to trust me. And the difference between Abraham and his daddy, Terah, is that Terah settled in Ai. But Abraham said, oh, you are my God, and I'll follow you wherever you send me. You hear what I'm telling you? In order for you to get what God has for you, you got to be able to break away from the traditions behind you. And you got to say, Lord, you are my God, and I will follow you wherever you send me. I trust in you. No matter where we go, no matter what we face, Lord, I trust in you. Do you hear what I'm telling you? And I don't know who this is for this morning, but I came here to tell you, don't settle for anything. Don't settle in AI. Get up and go where God is calling you to go and be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. somebody in here, God is about to turn your morning into dancing. Amen. We were singing about it earlier. He's about to make a way where there was no way. He's about to give you beauty for ashes. He's about to give you the, 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 the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He's about to heal somebody from cancer. Who am I talking to this morning? But do you trust him enough to change? Or are we just wasting each other's time this morning? Do you trust him enough to say, you know what, Lord? I want it so bad, I'll change whatever I've got to change in my life. I'll give up whatever I've got to give up. You have to be a person of action in order to change. You can't talk about changing and never take a step to do it. Amen. Listen to what I'm telling you. Every Monday I start a diet. <laughs> <laughs> Talk is cheap. Amen? Amen? Talk is cheap. Every Monday, I'll start one tomorrow with the men. Um, yeah, I'll start one tomorrow. And then I'll break it on 4th of July. It'll be that fast. <laughs> Talk is cheap. For somebody in here, in three days, everything in your life is about to change. And you're going to have to go in, and you're going to have to fight, and you're going to have to take possession of the land. I'm telling you, something is about to happen. Feel it in my spirit. Something is about to change. Something is about to give. And this is this word today is just confirmation on what God's already been showing you. Somebody's cup is about to overflow. Somebody's cup is about to run over in the name of Jesus. Somebody in here is about to step into a supernatural blessing. Supernatural healing. Supernatural miracle to where people are going to ask you, you're going to say, I don't know, it had to be God. Amen. God is about to take you and bless you with a new territory. 
He's about to do a new thing in you and things are about to change. And I came here to tell you that a change is coming. And you have to be ready for what God is getting ready to do. That's why you can't stay stuck in your old ways. That's why you can't stay stuck in your old habits. Because in order to get what God has for you, you have to go into new territory. And you have to be obedient to him. You have to have the capacity and the capability to change and to grow in your walk with the Lord. You cannot be stuck in yesteryear. You cannot be stuck in what God did so many years ago. you got to be moving with the cloud of God right now so that he can do a new thing in you. A, new, a change is coming in this room. If you will listen to what I'm telling you, somebody is about to get a breakthrough. Somebody is about to get a miracle in the name of Jesus this morning right here in Jesus' name. For somebody in here, God sent me here to serve notice and tell you this is the stage where everything changes. This is the moment that you've been praying for. This is the moment where the breakthrough happens. This is the moment where the miracle happens. Preach it, preach it. God is about to cross you over into what he's giving you to possess. Do you hear what I'm, man, I'm going to get into that more the next time that I preach. He's about to cross you over and take you into the place to, to fight. That's basically what he's telling the Israelites. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. Jesse, the, Jesse, the body of Ventura, once said that Christianity is for weaklings. He couldn't be no more wrong. There ain't nothing weak about being a Christian. You know why? Because every time you fall, you got to get back up. See, if you notice, I didn't say that you might fall or that you could fall. Every time you fall, you got to get back up when you walk with Jesus. And you got to dust yourself off and say, you know what, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up. It ain't happening again. Devil, you're not catching me off guard ever again. You hear what I'm telling you? You got to do whatever it takes to get your breakthrough. And God is about to change something in your life. What are you going to do when God begins to change things in your life and it doesn't look like the way that you expected it to look? What are you going to do? Let me say it like this. What are you going to do if they leave you? You're going to walk away from the Lord? He might have a better blessing in store for you. You don't hear preachers say that from the pulpit. What are you going to do if they lay you off? You're going to trust them or you're going to turn around? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when, the, when that change comes? Does it mean that God doesn't love you anymore? Of course not. Does it mean that he left you? Absolutely not. Does it mean, does it mean that he abandoned you and he, forsa he forsook you? No, of course not. But many times that's our default. The moment that a storm comes into our life, oh Lord, why? Why are you letting this happen? And what I've learned, let me tell you what I've learned in my walk, in my experience, is that there are times where God let me go through a storm so that he could root something out of me. Amen. Amen. He let me go through a trial to show me and to expose something that I had rooted in my heart that I needed to get rid of. It could be bitterness. It could be unforgiveness. It could be resentment. It could be hate. It could be jealousy. It could be envy. It could be pride. What is it? That God has exposed in you or is even exposing now that you need to hang up and you need to let go of. You see, we don't always understand the things that we go through when we're going through them. And you might not understand what's happening, but I came here to tell you that a change is coming regardless of what it looks like. And if I read my Bible correctly, it says that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't say some things. It doesn't say a few things. It says all things. That means that the good and the bad and the ugly, it's all going to work together for your good because you are called according to his purpose. If you love Jesus, that's what the scripture says. You see, an anointing and change is coming that you will not be able to contain. Right now, right now in the church worldwide, in spite of everybody talking about atheism, in spite of everybody talking about Pride Month, in spite of everything that is going on in life right now, let me tell you what's happening. In churches that don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, people are being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because an anointing is coming that we man will not be able to contain. Church rules and bylaws and organizations, they will not contain the power of God. There is an anointing that's coming into the house of God that you and I, we're not going to want nothing else but the glory of God to fall in this place. Holy smokes, the anointing of God is in this room. You know what? I, I, I got, I'm going to close.
close. I'm going to close. Can I get the praise and worship team up here? The Holy Spirit just showed me something that it's not on my notes. I didn't prepare for it. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Do me a favor. Somebody read Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, please. But read it out of a good Bible. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Y'all get too serious. Yeah, don't read the message. The message is like... Read, read it out of a sanctified Bible. Amen. My brother suffering from bronchitis, I pray healing over you in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. For I will go with you wherever you go. Amen. That's in the Old Testament. Anybody know what the last words that Jesus said before he ascended into heaven? They know not what they do. Somebody said they know not. No, not, not that one. That was on the cross. That was, he said on the cross. The last thing he said before he ascended into heaven. No, no. He said that on the cross. That's right. That's right, right there. He said, and lo, I will be with you until the very end of the age. The Holy Spirit just gave that to me right up here at this altar. Listen to what I'm telling you. God has been trying to be with you and go with you everywhere you go since the beginning of time. And some of us are saying, you know what, Lord, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm good, Lord. I'll call you when I need you. Right? I'll call you when I get in trouble. Oh, and by the way, I'll blame you when I get in trouble too. <laughs> right? I'm not making a political statement when I say this, but this country has abandoned God. And it's time that we turn back to God. It's time that we repent and we turn back to God. You know, we're about to celebrate Independence Day. It's time that we celebrate our independence and our freedom in the Lord Jesus. Listen to what I'm telling you. And lo, I will be with you until the end of the age. Jesus Christ said it right before he ascended into heaven. And he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So that way you and I could have access and power to the Almighty. And so that we could carry his power and his presence wherever we go. He said, do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. Listen to what I'm telling you. God is not raising up cowards and he's not raising up pansies. He's raising up warriors for the kingdom of God. And I know many times they depict Jesus kind of like Solomon. And I'm not mocking. I'm not being ugly. But I'll tell you that I serve a warrior king. Amen. And the Bible says that when he comes back, he's coming back with a sword coming out of his mouth and he's riding on a great white stallion. Let me tell you something. The first time that he came, he came on a donkey. He came on, the be on a beast of burden. But when he comes back, he's coming back on a great white stallion. That is an animal that is ready for war. He's coming back to wage war against our enemies. And when he comes back, he's coming back and he's going with us everywhere that we go. As a matter of fact, when we leave this place today, we are leaving walking with Jesus with us. And everywhere that we put our foot, it is called holy ground because it belongs to Jesus. You cannot be defeated and you cannot be a Christian at the same time. There is no defeat. There is no backing down. There is no giving up when you belong to Jesus. The war is already won. You just got to go in and smack some people around in the name of Jesus. You got to take authority over it. You got to take possession of it. When I walk in now, I walk in saying, Lord, I'm an ambassador of heaven. And when I come in this place, this place belongs to you. Somebody's going to get prayed for. Somebody's going to get healed. Not because of me, but because of you. I carry you in my heart. A change is coming. A change is coming. You feel it? That's the Holy Spirit. Would everyone please stand to your feet? Mm -mm -mm. You know what? If nobody else needed this word, I needed this word. Amen. <laughs> I want to open up this altar. I want to pray over you. And I want to ask the leaders to help me pray over you. Because we want to empower you. Empower you.
when you walk out of here, you walk out of here ready for what this week holds. Ready for the change. No matter what it's dressed up like. No matter what it looks like. I just want to trust God. No matter who comes, no matter who goes, no matter who stays. God, you are awesome and you are mighty. This altar is now open. All my words fall short. Lord, I, love you. I got nothing. And I ask you to remove my hands. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song was
continue moving in your spirit. We want your ways in our lives, Lord. We want you to move today in our lives. Keep breaking those chains, Father God. Keep working in those hearts, my Lord. Lord, we call out to you, Lord. I'm so stubborn, Father God, at times. I need you to keep working right now, my Lord. I need you to keep working right now, Lord. Yes. In this house today, Lord. Keep working. Don't quit, Lord. Don't quit, my God. Don't give up on us yet, Lord. Heavenly Father, 
I come before you right now. I come before you right now. And I confess. And I confess that I'm a sinner. That I'm a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. And I need your forgiveness. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart that you sent your one and only son. That you sent your one and only son to die for me. To die for me. And so now. And so now. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. I call out to you. I call out to you. Please come and save me. Please come and save me. Please change me. Please change me. Who you? Who you? Created me to be. Created me to be. I don't want to be anything outside of that. I don't want to be anything outside of that. From this day forward. From this day forward. I will live my life for you. I will live my life. Thank for you. you. Thank you, Lord. For sending your son. For sending your son. To die for me. To die for me. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your gift of salvation. Of salvation. And eternal life. And eternal life. Man. Thank you. Thank you. For everything you've done. For everything you've done. And everything you're gonna do. And everything you're gonna From do. From this day forward. From this day forward. I will follow you. I will follow you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give God the glory? I want to thank you all for being here, and I also want to pray to dismiss. I'm gonna ask you to keep me in prayer. I've been asked to to preach at a men's breakfast next Saturday. So I'm praying that God would use me as his humble servant to speak to a bunch of men about it. Amen. Amen. I've been told that we've had a few pastors come and check out, see what's going on at this church because of what God is doing. And all I can tell them is it's all Jesus. Amen. Amen. No matter who's up here preaching, no matter who's up here speaking, it's all Jesus. Right? Yes, sir. Amen. So we're going to pray to be dismissed, and I pray this, that as the change comes this week, that you would walk out of here prepared for what God has in store for you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray this, Lord. I, I preach the word that you put on my heart, and I thank you for it, Father God. Now I pray that it would take root in your people's hearts, minds, and souls, and that they would be prepared to face whatever comes their way this week, and they would have the victory over it. That we would go in and take possession of what you're giving us. In Jesus' name, I pray that church would begin when we walk out these doors. Now, may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, Journey to the Cross Church, I love you. God bless you. Have an awesome week. In Jesus' name. Talk to me. I forgot to turn this off.